Predictions. Some people love talking about what they think is going to happen in the upcoming year. Meanwhile, there are others who report on it as if it's absolute fact, even when it's not. But what happens when it turns out they're completely wrong? Well, people end up getting pretty quiet about that now, don't they? So here I am to remind everyone of things that people said were going to go down in 2022, but never did. Even though personally, I kind of wish all these things did, which is exactly why they're the topic of this episode. Because today... Thank you so much for the amazing support over on Patreon to Anigo Montoya and Dakari Garmin. To become a Patreon yourself, please go over to my Patreon page. Thank you so much. First off, I want to say Happy New Year to everyone and also a continued thank you to all of those out there who are supporting me on Patreon. It means the world to me. And also to everybody watching this, if you could please help me get to my goal of getting that silver play button by making sure that you're subscribed, it would also mean a lot to me as well. And now, with all that being said, let's get into the video. Everything old is new again, at least that's what they say, and it's what some people were saying about NXT, with the old possibly returning to be the new one more time. NXT 2.0 has been met with some mixed results. While some do really like what they're doing with Braun Breaker, other fans really miss what the black and gold had to offer. And so, after Part 2 celebrated their one year anniversary, we saw a black and gold logo at the end of the show, leading many fans to believe that the original NXT was coming back in some form. Form. And it also didn't help that WWE stayed mostly silent on the issue as well. And so, with Triple H now in charge, a lot of people thought he'd be restoring his original NXT product. And then the following week, things were pretty much just the same. As this new NXT logo was just that. A new logo. And nothing more. Okay, I want to say that I'm a big Bray Wyatt fan, and I love the Wyatt family. However, when it comes to Uncle Howdy, I'm not sold. A lot of fans out there have mentioned how the Uncle Howdy mask has only gotten worse and worse, and that their overall investment in the storyline is beginning to wane as well. Although some are glad that the angle has finally picked up some direction, and that the Uncle Howdy mask has gone back to being more Black Phone inspired. But going back to before Bray made his comeback, there was speculation that Bray's new character would be something along the lines of the White Rabbit, which was firmly hinted at through the QR codes. But now that Bray's here, the White Rabbit thing has pretty much vanished from the storyline. Line. Along with this horrifying reimagining of a bunny, even though if you ask me, it's just so much cooler. Although, if we got a return to form of OG Bray, I wouldn't be complaining about that either. Now, don't think that we're just going to talk about things that could have happened in WWE as it's time for All Elite Wrestling to get in on the action as well. The sky was seemingly the limit after Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish all appeared in AEW, as it felt like Adam Cole and Red Dragon were finally home in a promotion that they always should have been in. And with the rumors that All Elite Wrestling was going to introduce a trios championship, it seemed rather fitting that the former Undisputed Era would be the inaugural champions. Or in the least, they could have had a solid feud with the EV VPs over to gold. But then Kenny Omega would end up having to take some time off, although that didn't mean that the storyline was over, with it appearing that Adam Cole was seemingly using this as an opportunity to weasel his way in to take over as the new leader of the elite. But instead, this just turned into a storyline of Adam Cole being caught in the middle between Young Bucks and Red Dragon. And by the time Kenny Omega did come back and the trio's championships were introduced, Adam Cole would instead be out with injury and Bobby Fish would end up leaving the company. Huh, that's surprising. Between Kenny Omega and Adam Cole, you'd think Bobby Fish be the one who'd be out hurt. And we're still not done yet with AEW, as there was something else that we heard about a lot in January of last year, only to still not have it. After AEW's first year, it was said that the company would have been profitable except for the fact that they decided to invest in making a video game. Flash forward to year three, and we're still waiting for said video game to come out. Now, as many of you may recall, in the beginning of 2022, there were many people out there who were saying that AEW's first video game would finally be made available to the public later on in the year. And now in the beginning of 2023, they're saying the same thing. Now, I'm glad they're taking the time to make sure they get this video game right, but at the same time, 
if it did come out last year, they wouldn't have had to redesign the cover to get rid of CM Punk. And at this rate, who knows what other changes they're gonna have to make if the game doesn't come out soon. And one change they might have to make is instead of calling the game Fight Forever, maybe they should call it Taking Forever. Do you remember in the beginning of 2020 before Ronda Rousey came back to WWE and we were so much happier for it? Before Ronda Rousey made her much unwanted comeback at the Royal Rumble, there was speculation that there would be a different opponent for Charlotte Flair come WrestleMania season, that of Sasha Banks. This would have seen the boss not only win the Royal Rumble, but she would also get to go over Charlotte Flair, which perhaps might just have been capable of recapturing some of the magic from their old feud from a few years ago. Furthermore, there's also the possibility that this feud might have kept Sasha happy enough to prevent her from walking out. And considering that Sasha has now made her debut in New Japan as Mercedes Monet, it doesn't look like we'll be revisiting Sasha vs Charlotte anytime soon. But moreover, if this had happened, we could have avoided having to see Ronda Rousey take on Charlotte Flair yet again. And while Charlotte and Sasha have faced each other plenty of times, there were a lot of fans who were all about going back to that feud. The same can't be said about Charlotte and Ronda, since nobody was really asking for that. Let alone having Charlotte take down yet another one-on-one -on -one undefeated streak, only to then end up dropping the strap to Ronda the following paper view anyway. And so, even though it was really cool seeing Sasha Banks debut for New Japan Pro Wrestling, I have to admit I'd easily get rid of it if it meant I never had to see Ronda Rousey again. Continuing with other things that the Dirt Sheet said that AEW would do in 2022, we have their debut in the UK. The United Kingdom has an amazingly passionate wrestling fan base, one of the very best in the entire world. But yet, major American companies like WWE and AEW rarely give those fan bases the big live events that they so desperately deserve. However, while WWE did put on Clash at the Castle in Cardiff, AEW stayed firmly on this side of the pond. And while putting on an international show isn't exactly easy to do, there were reports that were firmly confident that this was going to happen for all elite wrestling in the past year, which is particularly upsetting considering how many fans in the United Kingdom really love all elite wrestling. And since you're watching a wrestling video on YouTube, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that you probably already know that there's quite a bit of fan base for AEW in the UK. There's been a lot of idle gossip out there that the Young Bucks are pretty insecure about their place in the world of tag team wrestling, and that they're willing to use their status as EVPs to hold down anyone that might jeopardize the idea that they're not the best tag team in the entire world. But this could have been easily disproven if we had only gotten the obvious payoff to the storyline between FTR and the Young Bucks. While in straight up two on two tag team action, both teams are tied at one victory apiece, it seemed like the Bucks were going to do the favors and give the crowning achievement of the AEW World Tag Team titles to FTR to fully cap off their belt collector gimmick, making it all the more surprising when they ended up dropping the straps to Swerve and Our Glory instead, a team that would just wind up breaking up not that long after. It's important to remember that sometimes rumors don't come true just because of circumstances and it has nothing to do with faulty reporting or bad gossip, like in this case with Cody Rhodes and not winning money in the bank. After being taken out of commission due to a serious injury, the American Nightmare was not available to participate in Money in the Bank, and many thought that Cody was an absolute shoe in to take home the briefcase. But alas, instead we got Austin Theory, who wasn't even supposed to be in the match initially. And considering that his run as Mr. Money in the Bank as well as his subsequent subsequent cash-in really didn't go over all that well, I think it's safe to say many of us probably would have preferred Cody to win it instead. Way to go Cody's pectoral muscle, you ruined things for everyone. Okay, so now we're going from something that didn't happen because of an injury to, well, the other way around. Well, this year we did get to see the former Paige, now going by Soraya, return to the ring in AEW, which was preceded by seeing Edge return to action as well. There were rumors in the beginning of 2022 that there would be another name joining this list, that of WWE color commentator Corey Graves. But alas, that didn't happen, as Corey is still firmly planted behind the commentary table. And while he is really good at that, many members of WWE 
Japanese audience never got to see what he could do in the ring, especially since he only wrestled in the very early days of NXT. And while you could always go back to check out some of his work, it's not the same thing as seeing it live. Furthermore, I think it's also safe to say that Corey probably has some unfinished business to do in the world of wrestling, as his career was much too short. Although, if Corey Graves did get back into the ring, commentary is going to be taking a huge hit. Okay, so a ton of rumors in 2022 were all about who's going back to WWE, and so instead of counting each of them individually, let's just wrap things up by talking about them all at once. With Triple H now in charge of creative, the rumor mill was going bazonk with all kinds of names being thrown out there as potentially showing up in WWE. Like with AEW contracted wrestlers like the previously mentioned FTR as well as Miro. And while a WWE return did happen for one William Regal, there were some other big names that could have been relinquished of their AEW status only to end up in Connecticut. Like MJF who cut the enraged Fire Me Tony promo, which some believe was an on-air airing out of some real life backstage drama. Now whether that's true or not remains to be seen, but if it was accurate, this could have led to the possibility of MJF joining World Wrestling Entertainment. And he's not the only one who could have been released from contract, as another wrestler in steeped in backstage drama could have also gone to WWE after getting out of AEW. And of course, I'm talking about CM Punk. While a return to WWE now isn't as good as coming back after 7 long years, for many CM Punk fans, it still would have been nice to see him back. Well, there you go, 10 rumors that I think should have happened in 2022, but what are some that you could think of? Let me know down in the comments, and please, please make sure that you're a member of the Know It All Nation and that you're subscribed to this channel. And also, thank you to all my amazing Patreon supporters out there. And of course, also thank you for watching. And as always, Dave knows.